Hey everyone, today's lesson will be a little bit more JavaScript oriented because I want to show you how we can show the validation errors on the front end. Right now, if we try to save an empty category, we get a 422 status. So if we open the DevTools here and try to save this, we get 422 status and the response body contains the validation errors. I want to add some sort of field validation UI here, a similar way to what we have on the registration page where validations are shown below the fields and the fields have the red border around them. If we open the register twig template here, we see that we're adding easy invalid class conditionally to these input fields, uh, whether or not that field has a validation error. And we're also rendering the div element with invalid feedback class where we're actually displaying the first validation error for that field. So I want to do something similar on the JavaScript side when we make Ajax requests. There are of course different ways we could do this. We could use validation JavaScript libraries, we could show pop-up notifications or alerts, but I want to be consistent and use whatever is already provided to us by Bootstrap. So basically we need to add this class to the input fields dynamically and we also need to create this div element dynamically and display the error message properly. So let's open the categories JS file. And this is the post request that we are making whenever the update or save category button is clicked. And the response in here contains the formatted JSON data. Now I don't want to add validation handling in here because then we'll have to do the same thing in every other post request that we'll make. Instead, I want to add the default validation handling within the main Ajax function that this post function calls. So if validation errors are returned from it, it is handled behind the scenes. In here, we can simply, instead of logging the response, maybe close the category model. So we can call hide function. And then let's head over to the ajax.js file. Let's scroll up here. The post function calls the ajax. So we'll need to adjust this function in here. So instead of returning the response with parsed JSON, let's simply log the response to see what the response object actually contains. And we can see which fields or properties of that object we can use to determine if the request was successful or maybe it failed, what the status of the response is and so on. So let's still return the response.json here. Let's open the browser, refresh the page. Let's try to save an empty category. The model was closed and within the console, we see that we have two response objects logged. The first one is the get request where we fetch the category information when we clicked on the edit button. And second one is for the post request. So if we open both, we see that the get request was successful because OK is set to true, the status is 200, and the post request failed because OK is set to false and the status is 422. So basically we can check if the response was successful by checking the OK properties. So if response is not successful, then we can do some validation handling in this block. Within this block, we can also check for the specific status of the response because we want to do the validation handling only if the status is 422. We could add handling for other statuses later if we wanted to, but for now, all we care about is the 422 status code. Now, I also want to return the raw response object here instead of parsing it to JSON by default. So we'll remove this and we'll return the raw response object. I know in the last lesson we added this default JSON parsing within here, but now that I think about it, I think it's more flexible and better to parse response to JSON only when needed on the calling side, which is on the categories.js side for this example. So before we test this out, we need to go back to categories.js and we have this get Ajax call. We need to parse the response to JSON in here before passing it to the open edit category model. So we can add then response response.json. Now let's test this out quick. Let's open the browser, refresh the page. Let's try to save an empty category. And sure enough, we get the validation error being logged in the console. Now the issue here is that the model was closed even though there are some validation errors, right? I don't want model to close 
when there are some errors so if we go back here we can actually check if the response is okay and only then hide the edit category model because remember the response now is a raw response object and not the parsed json now if we go back to the browser refresh the page let's try to save an empty category the model is no longer closed we still get the validation errors logged if we try to save a valid category name we see that the model gets closed and no validation error is being logged great so now let's figure out how to actually show the validation errors under the necessary fields so let's go back to the ajax.js and instead of logging some text here let's try to actually access the validation errors and log that now remember that errors are part of the body of the response so we'll need to call json function on the response to parse the body and then access those validation errors so let's open the browser and see what gets logged when we try to save an empty category as you can see, the logged errors isn't really a JSON object, but it's a promise, which means that we need to add a then callback, which will be called whenever this promise is fulfilled, and therefore will pass down the parsed JSON to that callback. So in order to access the actual uh, validation errors, what we need to do is that we need to chain then function call here, and then add the callback here where we get the errors, and do console log errors and now we should have access to the actual validation errors let's refresh the page let's try to save an empty category now and sure enough now the validation errors are being logged so let's go back to the code and instead of logging the errors let's maybe call some kind of validation handler function and pass these errors as an argument to that function that way we don't bloat this uh, ajax function anymore we can extract the validation error handling in its own function Function. We can call it something like handle validation errors and pass down the errors here. Let's create this function. We can create it somewhere here. So function handle validation errors and this takes in errors as an argument and we know that errors at this point is a json object so we need to loop through each validation error so that we can then find the corresponding input element to then programmatically add the necessary class to it we can use the for in loop here to iterate over the object properties because the properties of this errors object are the field names and then we can use the field name to find the correct input field and yes we are only doing the input fields for now and this would not work for select or any other type of inputs but for now this is all we care about and we can always adjust it later when we need to support more fields now once we find the correct element with that name we need to add the is invalid class this class to that input field so let's copy this and we can add the new class by doing element class list add is invalid let's also log the errors for this specific field let's open the browser refresh the page let's try to save an empty category and it doesn't seem to have worked because the category name input does not have the red border around it however we do see that the validation errors have been logged now the reason the class was not applied to this field is because the query selector in here is returning the first matching element to this query and edit category model isn't the only place where we have the input with the name name because remember this name actually equals to the name of the input and in this specific case the name is actually equal to name as the value i know that might sound a little bit confusing but if we log this name in here and refresh the page let's try to save an empty category we see that that's the name that's the actual input name and we're trying to look up this input field by this name but we have a second field with the same name within the new category so if we click the new category here we see that this is the input field that gets the red border because this is the first input field that was selected by the document dot query selector and therefore the class was added to this field to fix this we need to find the field within a specific container and in this case that container would be the edit category model now we don't want to hard code the edit category model in here instead maybe we should accept uh, some kind of container as an argument in this function something like 
DOM element or maybe DOM container or something like that and then we can replace the document with this. Now we need to pass the DOM element to this function so we'll pass it in here and we need to have access to the DOM element within the Ajax function. Now we also need to accept the DOM element within the Ajax function as well. So we can add the DOM element here as a parameter and set it to null by default. And then within the get and post, we only need it for the post function. So we'll accept it here and we'll pass it down in here. And wherever we're calling the post function from, from within the categories.js, we can pass that DOM element right here. And the DOM element is edit category model dot underscore element. As I mentioned before, there are different and probably better ways of doing this and you can decide which way you want to do it. It is up to you how you want to parse the validation errors and display them on the front end. All right, so let's test this out now. Let's refresh the page. Let's try to save an empty category. And as you can see, now the correct field is marked as invalid. Great, so now we need to create the new div element to actually display the error message or error messages because the structure of errors is actually an array, right? If we switch to the console here, we see that this contains an array. And even though it only contains one validation error, it's still an array and it could contain more than one validation errors. So let's create a div element for each validation errors. Again, this is up to you. You may choose to only display the first validation error like we did for the registration uh, template. But for the Ajax side, I'm going to display all the validation errors for each field. So let's go back to the handle validation errors function and let's loop through all the errors of the specific field. We can use a for of loop to loop over the array values. So we'll do for each error of the errors of this field. Then we need to create a new div element with the invalid feedback class and we need to set the text content of it to the actual error message. So we'll create the error div here, which will be document create element div. Then we'll do error div class list add invalid feedback and error div text content and we'll set it to the actual error message. Finally, we need to append this div element to the parent of the input element. So it sort of gets added as a sibling to this input element. So we'll do element parent node append error div. I know that this may not work or look bad if the input is not within a div itself, but we are assuming a standard bootstrap form and field structure. Of course, you can adjust it to your needs or make it as flexible as you need. Let's test this out quick. Let's open the browser, refresh the page. Let's try to save an empty category. And as you can see, the error message is appended. Let's click the save again, and it adds another div with the same validation error message, which is not that great. Also, what if user fixes the mistake and clicks the button? Currently, we are not clearing any validation errors. So for example, if I put in the name of the category and click save, the model is closed, but if we reopen it, it still has that red border and still contains the validation errors. So we need to clear the validation errors. We can create a new function called clear validation errors here. So let's do function clear validation errors. And this will accept the DOM element as an argument because we can use that element to find all the elements that contain is valid class and all the elements that have invalid feedback class. So we can do DOM element query selector is invalid and we'll do for each function element and for each element we can remove the is invalid class. Then we also need to remove the invalid feedback elements which contain the validation error messages. So we can do element parent node query selector all. And actually this should be query selector all as well because query selector will just select the first one. And we'll look for the elements with invalid feedback class. And then for each element that we'll loop through, we'll simply call the remove function on it to remove that element. Then let's call this function right on top here and before we call it we need to check if the DOM element is actually set because remember by default it's set to null so we need to make sure that we actually have something in this variable before we call this function. Let's test this out quick, let's refresh the page, let's try to save an empty category. 
let's try to save it again multiple times and as you can see only one instance of the error messages are displayed let's try to save a valid category name here and then reopen it and as you can see the errors are gone all right so before we wrap this up i want to convert the delete action to use ajax as well because right now it submits the form if we open the index template of the categories page we see that we have this form with the submit button so instead of this i'm simply going to duplicate this right here and we'll change this to delete category button and we'll change the icon to this and we can get rid of this form then within the categories.js file let's duplicate this event listener change this to delete category button and instead of passing the name as the data we need to pass the method to indicate that it's a delete request the thing is i don't want to do this every single time i want to have a delete request so why don't we have this handling within the ajax.js file and instead why don't we just have another function here instead of post maybe have a delete function now the delete is a reserved keyword so we'll just use the short name for the delete let's get rid of this because this will be handled by the ajax function and we also don't need this specific element and i don't think we need this then call here as well so we can get rid of that now we can also add some kind of confirmation to ask a user if they are sure that they want to delete this category so we can do something like confirm are you sure you want to delete this category and if they click yes only then we'll make the delete request now we need to import this delete in here the same way we imported get and post and we need to create this function so let's go to ajax.js let's duplicate the post we'll call this delete we don't need the dom element and we'll change the method to delete now we also need to adjust the ajax function here and we need to check within this block here where we have the csrf methods if the request method is not post then we need to pass the underscore method as an additional uh, parameter or variable to the body we also need to change the actual method on the options because right here the options we are passing the method in here and this will be set to delete and we need to reset this to post in the case where the method is not set to post so we'll do options method equals to post so whenever the method is equal to delete we are resetting the method to post and we're passing the delete uppercase as an additional uh, argument or variable to the body and this should be good enough i think the csr fields are already taken care of here and finally i think we need to export the delete here and we should be good let's go back to the browser refresh the page let's try to delete this and as you can see we are getting a pop-up confirmation let's click ok let's switch to the network tab and seems like it worked but it is trying to redirect us to the categories page because we're getting the 302 status code right here but if i refresh the page we see that that category is actually gone now the reason it's redirecting us is because within the categories controller within the delete method we have this redirect to the categories page with status 302 so we can simply get rid of this to not do any redirects and that should work let's go back here let's try to delete category 4 seems like that worked we get status 200 if we refresh the page that category is gone notice that we need to do page refresh to see the category be removed from the table same goes when we make the update to the category name so if we change the category name to something like category 10 and then save it we see that it closes the model but it does not update this table right away we have to refresh the page to actually see that update that's something that we're going to fix in the next video where we'll introduce something called pagination and data tables I know that this was more JavaScript centered lesson and I apologize if you're a bit overwhelmed with JavaScript. Notice that JavaScript is not a requirement for this project. It's just an extra thing that I wanted to cover because I think it's important if you want to build modern web applications. That is why I'm covering and showing you how you can hook up your PHP with the front end. You could uh, use as little or as much of JavaScript as you want. You could ditch the JavaScript and Ajax requests entirely and just do full page reloads for every action if you wanted to. 
So if you feel overwhelmed by JavaScript and don't know JavaScript and don't want to learn it, stick to full page reloads and regular HTML forms like we had for the delete action. So this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I'll see you in the next one.